But without further ado, we get to our first speaker and what an opening we have, Monica Kana of Google. So Monica is, the, is, a, is a product design lead at Google where she uses her creativity and human-centered perspective to create digital products that meet user needs. Now, she's a really empathetic problem solver. She's got a huge amount of experience, way more than a decade, though she won't thank me for saying that, in UX, product design, content strategy, and she's also authored some brilliant courses on plural site in the field of design. She's gonna be talking about building desirability. Monica, it's so great to have you here at the Global Innovation Forum, welcome. Thank you so much, Tom. I'm really excited uh, for this experience and uh, really looking forward to this event. Fantastic. And we've got the wonderful Jack, I think, again, who's going to be, be visually scribing as we go. So we'll, we'll look at that. Monica, just take us back, if you will, and, and, and tell us how you came to be, you know, product design lead at Google. Where did you start? What's been your journey to, to get along this, this route? Yeah, it's been more than 12 years in the industry now where I started, um, as a fresh out of college and landed into design, which was at that time, people didn't know more about like, you know, what is UX, what is visual design, yeah. what is UI, and everything was, you know, uh, under one umbrella that uh, used to be done. And I started my career with Billasoft and then I've changed a couple of companies, which uh, I have got a chance to work with product organizations like Magic Bricks, and I uh, have done with a couple of um, work with companies like which were based on service design and services uh, based on the client uh, side as well. So, and yes, before joining Google, I was working with IBM as Associate Design Director, and there also I got a chance to work on a couple of great projects. And was this always in you, this desire to be in technology and design? Were, were those sort of things you nurtured as a child? Can you look back and see those sort of things? Of course, of course. As I said that, you know, at that time, even people in the industry were just evolving. And then I have seen design evolve, like from the starting when everything was on web and then it came on mobile. So we started designing for mobile apps and then it gone. Google advised to go mobile first approach. So, you know. So I have seen those transition and uh, I have myself grown up uh, with these transitions, whether it was on UX, because people were learning that, you know, how UX is different from VD and how uh, UI yeah. is different from UX, because still people, you know, start calling them UX slash UI, which is not one thing. And, you know. Yeah. So I have seen that I've grown myself and I think I was lucky enough to get great projects, great, um, you know, building the products from scratch where I got to learn. And also with product organizations, I got a chance to, you know, see that how the design is actually working for the users or if it's not working for the users. Well, so that brings us nicely, doesn't it, to the topic today, which is about building desirability. So. Look, you're, you're brilliant uh, when you, you talked to me earlier about this. So tell, tell me, what do you mean by building desirability? So, yeah, desirability is when people feel attracted towards your product, when they people desire that, you know, hey, this compels me. This actually compels to uh, use this product and they actually want to use it. So when there is a want behind, you know, just having it, it's it's the desirability when they actually desire to get an update on their favorite product when they actually wait to get that update or they look forward that hey when this thing is coming out i really want to use it i want i'm waiting for it so that's when they actually feel connected with their heart that you know this is the product i can't live without it i this is yeah. becoming part of my life so Can that's you... call yeah sorry monica Give, give me some examples. I mean, from your own experience, what what are what are products that have managed to build desirability into it, into themselves? What what does that really look like tangibly? Yes. So uh, I'll just uh, say, like, you know, how do you start your day? Like, do you wake up through alarms or if yes? I, which I, 
I am waking through kids who have got built in desirability in themselves, but also sometimes undesirability. But I, I do, I get, I get onto my phone. Actually, the first thing I will do is do a Wordle. That's my wake up routine. So, yes. So what do you check first thing on your mobile? You know, so why I'm yeah. asked, saying this, that, you know, this is the tendency that people have these days. You know, there must be something that that bothers you when you get up and when you get ready to go out maybe for work or maybe yeah. for shopping or anything that you want to do do you drive or do you book a cab you know yeah and and when you say on driving do you see any uh, application say google map or anything like which tells you which route is faster which which takes you easily through the journey you know or is it that that you since you know the route you don't see it so. No, abs absolutely. I mean, for me, we were driving uh, out of town the other night and, and Google Maps, you know, was up because, you know, we have an argument between the car sat nav and Google Maps, which one's better. But basically, my wife always says Google is normally better because it has more more nodes, more use. So we're, we're there following the kind of wiggles around the road of, of Google. Um, yes. to help us get, to yeah. Uh, you know, they have introduced like, you know, uh, it will be more of uh, in the upcoming releases, it will be more of an immersive view uh, that will come out. So people are waiting for that feature to get out. Like, you know, I can see through it that, you know, which uh, fuel sensitive uh, routes are there, where I can find yes. fuel, where I can uh, see the immersive view. So these are some of the examples that I wanted to give that, you know, this is what the desirability all about, that you can't think of any other thing but that particular application or that particular product. Like, you know, like which laptops come to your mind when you think of buying it? Which car are you planning to buy next? The brand, you know, you get yeah. attached to it. And I'm sure everyone in our daily lives are going through it. You know, we, we, check our apps do as you said that you know you get up and you first thing you do is you check your mobile so there must yeah. be some apps that you're using during the day and why you're using it and it's not that you check once in a day how many times you check that app during the day too many <laughs> too many <laughs> but yeah i mean you know uh, i think for many of us if you look at your screen time um there, there's huge huge usage but what's the difference then what's the nuance between you know i check my work email on mail you know versus that is there a different level for desirability does that does that encompass something else where it's truly desirable rather than just functionally useful exactly thank you for asking this question tom i really want to tell this because you know people i know must be you know thinking that what's the difference between a usable product or a usability versus desirability? You know, like mm, how do you mm. feel that, you know, if I have built the product which is more usable, is it going to be desirable as well? No, because desirability is a is a one step further to making it usable because usable okay. is just that, you know, the functionality is working fine. It's more of uh, intuitive, but the desirability goes a long way. You know, it starts with empathy because once you have to understand that what the masses are looking for, what is their basic need that they they want? So say I was giving you example of cabs, right? So earlier, if you talk about 10 years back or maybe more than that, it was very difficult to, you know, book something from your um, mobile or on web. That, yeah. So Uber came in place, which talks about, you know, it's, it's just a one click away and, you know, there is a gap and you don't have to worry about all the hassle that, you know, how to pay and what is the security, how to take it. Even you can notify your emergency contacts. So all that has been taken care. And that's where the first rule goes in that, you know, your basic need for the user is met. And you, yes. you do understand their culture, you do understand their language, you do understand their desires. And then, of course, it talks about more in terms of the emotions that, you know, the more emotional, positive response your design can give to the users, the more likely that they will come to your product. And it can be any application, it can be one page, you know, that, that they want to view it on a daily basis. And there might be some emotional connect that you have built on them. And that's where they're coming here. Okay. 
And I'm just going to, for the audience, please do um, feel free to put questions into the chat and, and we'll try and take them as we go through. But Monica, my next question is really, you've talked a bit about empathy. Um, and we've got uh, Nyan talking about always checking the weather app before going out. Yeah, that's um, that's certainly, I, I think, as a Brit, very true. We never know quite what, what's coming. Um, what's coming? But uh, yeah, how, where do you start? Where, where does it, if, if, if we say, right, desirability is that level above usability, what's the, what's the next step for you, from what you understand in, in sort of trying to build that true user desirability? Yes. So uh, I have created a, you know, vegan, four wheels vegan, and that I use for most of the projects that I do. And I want to recommend that it oh, has four wheels. One starts with first wheel is connect. Second is engage. Third is measure. And fourth is appreciate. So when you start with empathy, the very first thing, as I was saying, was connect with your users. You know? Yeah. You can achieve that, you know, and how do you achieve that? That's the question. That. Yeah. So personalize your content, you know, the more personalized content you have, which talks about and tailored to their needs. You know, everyone likes to feel special that, hey, it talks about my name, my needs, my interests and, you know, my last activities, my transactions, my similar views those kind of things actually make that connection and and that influence their behaviors. So yeah. even if they want to watch it, for example, or they don't want to actually buy something, they might like it because you are giving them a recommendation and you're suggesting them based on their influence, based on their behavior and influencing yeah. them. Yeah. So that's the first thing that you need to connect with the users. You need to understand that what is it, how are they behaving? What is that can trigger them to actually come to this platform? And the and very- Monica, before we move on to engage, can I just ask on that? Because sure. you talk about empathy. Do you try and get face-to-face -face with users? Do you, do you actually try and spend time with them? How, how are some of the ways that you, you do connect, you do understand the kind of what they're after, so you can yes. personalize. So that comes to another topic of research that you know you talk, yeah. you have to understand your users. And how do you understand your users is through research. Okay. That you know, you you understand them, maybe physically meeting them, and because of two years pandemic, you know that it was quite difficult. And it's not that company have stopped working. They have still managed to, you know, do virtual interviews. They have yeah. managed to understand, track their uh, behavior and have their interviews that, you know, how, how they can actually understand that, you know, what is the emotion that once this, and that's why I say that, you know, content plays a tremendous role in bringing people's emotions out. That, you know, how do they feel when you show something like a blend message and something that touched their language that they use when they are interacting with that product. So content is definitely the primary thing that I would say when you have to, you know, merge the content with the context of the users. Yeah. So that's the first thing. And of course, okay. there are many things that goes in place. Like, you know, the more you tell stories to them, the more they can relate to you and the singularity effect, you know, take real people examples that, you know, how they can relate that, hey, if this person can do, I can also do it, you know. So yeah, yeah. those Thank effects you. also bring them the connection and more of a personalized experience. And it depends that which application you are building or which product it is. And then you can research with the real users um, if in-person interviews are not possible, do conduct some virtual interviews and try to understand that and do some A-B testing, you know, that uh, yeah. this makes sense or this makes sense or what this actually reveals their emotion or how do they feel and give them open-ended questions because uh, there is nothing right or wrong when you talk about design. So. so you want to really get under the skin of what it's all about for them. So that's Connect. What about, talk to us about Engage. Yeah, so engage is 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 something that you know goes from end to end customer journey, which starts at every time before 
during and after. And that's where your customer experience also talks about that, how the new users are converted into becoming happy customers and they stick to you because it costs five times when you have to attract a new customer and then to keeping the existing ones. So of course you need to engage with them at every step. And that's where, you know, you tell them that you're there. You take that ownership that, you know, if something, what benefits you are giving to them. And at the same time, if something is broken, you are there for them. You know, the trust yeah. that reinforces the user trust that, hey, this, this brand is having these values, which talks about authenticity, security, and reliability. So you talk about those things. Yeah. Lovely. That that's what I believe the engage part is. And then the measure. Just, we've got a question here from Ignatia, um, which is about how do you prioritize those emotions that you uncover? Um, so, uh, it, you know, do you have a sense that actually this is a product or a service that's going to be about a particular emotion? And so we're, we're kind of trying to tap into that. Or is it more about, as you say, uncovering what the emotions from the users might be and then sort of presumably there might be a few different ones. So how do you prioritize? So yeah, emotional design, uh, as I said earlier, it plays a tremendous role in desirability, in building desirability or driving it. And that's where your brand values come in picture, that how your yeah. brand actually uh, values the user needs. And if they do, because that's what anticipate and accommodate your user needs and responses. So how well you cater to their responses, that shows them, you know, that this was the feedback they gave and how uh, importantly you have figured it out to, you know, place it in, in the features. So that's where they see the value of the brand that, you know, yeah. they, they value our needs, they value our feedbacks, they value our responses. And that's where you influence their behavior, their decision making power and also affect affection because then they feel, hey, you have given this and this is coming out because we heard from uh, 200 people about the same feature. And this is yeah. what we are ruling next. Yeah. And you see the importance because your product will only work if people are using it, you know. Absolutely. So you need to and, understand. And, oh, sorry, yeah. Monica. Yeah, I was just saying that you need to understand their psychology part, that, you know, the mental model of the users that we call, that how they are meeting their needs and how you can, you know, help them achieve their goals. And if you do that, and if you value their responses, that's where they feel connected with you, they feel the value and that goes the whole brand value it's not yeah. just one product that you can do it but it's a holistic picture that you know you build the whole umbrella of your brand in that and that's where i was saying engage is 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 the most prominent part of your journey because that goes from starting point which is before when they are even you know coming something to buy on your site or on your application and they hear about you and Fantastic. from there they hear about you how many people are recommending you? What are your feedbacks on, um, you know, applications and how, how people are, you know, actually feeling connected with you. That's the before journey. And now the during, when they're there with you, they're observing. Mapping, mapping the emotions along the, yeah. along the way. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the only other thing I would add to that, Monica, is I think, focusing on emotion as a brand is great and one of the things that also as a brand you do want to consider is distinctiveness so looking at as well ignatio as a part maybe of your question is maybe you can elicit a different emotion to a competitor and that can be a, a you know a, a, an opportunity as well but exactly. we should turn, turn our attention Sorry. Uh, yeah in continuation or uh, just to add for the one point there that yes as you rightly said that you know you are serving the same purpose and there yeah. are competitors in the market but why people should go to you and not to them is one of the usp that you need to always think of that the unique yeah. selling point that you know why and the very first thing is that what are your brand values do you care yeah. about your user needs do you care about their responses or you just ignore their emails and their support cases or there is someone sitting on the desk to help them. And, you know, if there is someone, do they pick their calls? And, you know, there is a customer service. And that's where I was saying engage, which goes with 
after when they have done the purchase, they have done the transaction, whatsoever format they can. And then are you still connected with them? Do you see that how they are doing, how their uh, response, even after using the product? So that's brilliant on engage. And um, I don't want to shortcut us on measure and appreciate either. So talk to us a little bit about uh, that. Of course, the important part, as I was saying, that I got lucky to work with some of the product companies where I could see the measure part, which is the key part, because now when you have designed, when you know that, you know, this is something going to be working as per the research, because there is a difference of what people say and what they do. So once they, that goes live and you see the response coming, that's where you measure their health metrics that, you know, how, how they're behaving, how they're actually doing things and what is it that they might be facing challenges? What yeah. is most compelling thing that they want to see? And then surprising them, delighting them, you know, yeah. maybe they're not expecting and they don't know what should be the right thing. But then you understand because you are the experts and they rely on you that, you know, uh, what should be the next step? You are the experts. You need to think on those lines. And if you give them a delightful experience, that's where they're going to come back to you. And why do they want to come back to you is because of, you know, the values you are showing in your journey throughout. Yeah. And that's what measure is. And appreciate is that everyone wants to feel special. So why not? Uh, you know, give uh, some kind of discounts or special offers to your loyal customers who are sticking to you and appreciating them if they are doing something, uh, purchasing from your application or using your application on a daily basis. What what is that that you know you can bring in their lives? How and why? As you rightly said, that why do they want to come to you and not to others? Which car comes to your mind first and why? And I think that's such an important point, isn't it, about the, the loyal customers. I think so often we seem to appreciate the, or I as a consumer feel that a lot of appreciation is shown in acquisition of customers rather than in, in um, you know, holding on to customers. That kind of there's a sense that loyalty, that once you're in, you're loyal, but actually you're not. You're just, you're just satisfied. You're waiting for a better option to come along. Whereas there are some companies and products and services that truly put effort into delighting you consistently. And I think that is where you get that desirability, as you say. So just to turn our attention very quickly, Chris, rather than Jack, has been doing this wonderful drawing, which maybe we can spotlight, um, Monica, as you can see, just taking taking shape here. Um, but uh, you, your, four, your four wheels are your wagon. Um, so, and again, just to encourage final questions from the audience, because we've only got a few minutes left. Um, the, and the drawings will all be available to download. What about, what are some of the challenges maybe, just to finish up on, on, on that? You know, what are some of the challenges that people face in terms of building desirability? The biggest challenge is to be persistent. You know, when you when you reach to a point where people know you, people want to be with you, and they they really like your uh, you know system and the purpose that they they uh, you are serving for them as for their needs, but then to be persistent is the challenge that people now have high hopes from you, and yeah. they. They have every time those hopes, like, you know, their delightful experiences that I was saying. So it becomes more of our responsibility that, you know, we need to leverage that expectation in each and everything yeah. that we do and every time that we do. And as people can switch between different options, uh, you know, there are competitors and you can see that, you know, as per the reports, uh, uh, it has been said like 47% customers who experience bad service they change providers within 48 hours, wow. which is a big number. But 47% so, of customers change within 48 hours. That's an amazing stat. Yes. And 14% of people actually uninstall your applications on right. any basis as per the report from eMarketer. So how, how do you cater to that is, you know, being persistent, being um, more responsible in your design that, you know, it's not that one time show and it's going to be there for you. So you have to understand each and every 
um, point, your touch points from the user side before, yeah. during, and after. And then your content should speak what your brand values are. So that brings immediate emotional reaction, but also communicate that it's going to be beneficial for them. And it's like when their brain catches their heart and has to determine whether your product is valuable and if that shows value to them, if they know that, yay, this resonates with my um, you know, interest or my emotions, that's where they don't find any room to doubt their heart yeah. assessment. Even the so, cost factor also comes later for them in that case. We have one final question probably to wrap us up, Monica, from Tony. So who says, thanks for sharing your knowledge. Um, how do you work with future desirability? So coming to utilizing emerging technologies in order to create desirable solutions. So how do you, how do you kind of, uh, yeah, paint, paint that sort of picture further forward? So <clears throat> how far we go in technology does not matter because it always starts with empathy as I said, that, you know, so you bring these three content together, which is one is your context of the users. You understand their context, when they are using it, why they are using it, what compels them to, you know, get here, you know, and then your content. So if you stick around the content, context and the users, that's where you think of, you know, building it further. So yeah. even if you think of the future emerging technologies, what goes in hand is just think from the human side and not as a software that you're designing a software so how long or how far we go in technology what remains is the human touch in your design so be more on the conversational side more understanding from the emotional side and that's where humans are there and not the just the software yeah so and we have a yeah we have a yeah, saying it for users for humans so think that in mind and then you club all this together and think of that how you can delight them how can you bring them back to you just respecting their time and energy as well and monica we have a saying that you know um markets change technologies change but humans sort of human nature remains the same so i think as exactly as you're saying the human the human at the heart of it is actually we're much slower changing than all these technologies you know we're still stuck in the savannas and the metaverse is happening. You know, we're, we're, the, the human the human brain is not evolving that quickly. So They would like experimenting with new technologies. They would like to engage with them. But what is their main goal to come there is Precise. what you need to think about. And if you think and match that, bridge that gap of uh, the technology and the needs is when people are going to stick with you more. Well, I think very sadly, Monica, um, our time together is going to be drawing pretty quickly to a close. But um, thank you so much for it, having me. Here. It's been brilliant talking with you. I think I hope the audience have got as much out of it as I have. Thank you for all your questions, Chris. Maybe we can highlight your your drawing for one final time. As I say, all will be available for download. Um, but Monica, thank you for being a wonderful open speaker, opening speaker for. But gift virtual edition 2022. Thank you so much for having me here.